Well, the snow began about four this afternoon, but the tailgating began at about two o'clock, and the fans are as ready as anyone for this matchup tonight. Let's go down to the field at Armand Katayan. Armand. Thank you, Greg. Uh, with Coach Bill Belichick. Bill, just your second game in 27 days. How big of an advantage is that with the rest, given the conditions of the field? Well, I don't know. You know, I think we've uh, tried to take advantage of the time we've had, and, uh, you know, I think we're ready to go tonight. The field, I think the footing is going to be a little bit of an issue, and I think that catching the ball is going to be a little bit of an issue with the flakes. I don't think the quarterbacks will have a problem throwing it. At least it didn't look like they did pregame. All right, Coach, thank you. Greg. All right, Armand, and there on the other side of the field is John Gruden in his fourth season as the Oakland head coach and looking for a ticket tonight to the AFC championship game. Adam Vinatieri will kick it away. The Raiders have won the toss. And deep to receive is number 42, Terry Kirby. Kirby has returned one kickoff for a touchdown this season for 90 yards. Vinatieri with the approach, and we're underway in Foxborough. Kirby from about the seven. And across the 30 to about the 32 or 33 yard line. A return of 26 yards and onto the field comes Rich Gannon. You have to say he's hot. The fewest interceptions in the NFL, a third consecutive year that he has thrown for more than 3,000 yards. He's pretty much done it all once again this year. Yeah, he has, Greg, and this offense is built to suit his talents. The quick throwing game, send five wide receivers out or five receivers, and he usually finds that open guy. And as Bill Belichick said, he's got all the tricks that a veteran quarterback needs to help him give him a chance to have success against your defense. John Ritchie and Charlie Garner in the backfield and the pitches to Garner around the right side, turns the corner and appears to have enough for the first down as he's across the 40-yard line. Pushed out by Ty Law after a 12-yard game. Well, you talk about this Raiders offensive line, they protect the quarterback very well and they're strong enough to do a good job in the run game too. Charlie Garner in the backfield comes off 158 yards against the Jets. He's with Richie Rice and Brown, the wide receivers. Roland Williams is the tight end. The single back in the backfield for the deep back, Tyrone Wheatley, number 47. And Wheatley gets the handoff to about the 45. Okay, man, it's over. Teddy Bruschi, the middle linebacker, makes the stop as we look at the Patriot defense. Hamilton, Mitchell, Riddick Parker, Anthony Pleasant. You look at the Patriot linebackers. Teddy Bruschi in the middle, playing it for the first time this year, had an outstanding season. An outstanding secondary with Ty Law and Otis Smith on the corners to Bucky Jones and pro, boy, pro bowler Lawyer Malloy at safety. There is Romeo Cornell, the defensive coordinator. Boy, you always hear so much about Bill Belichick on the defense. You tend to forget Romeo Cornell has been with Bill Belichick for a long time on second and eight. The give is straight ahead to Garner. Garner to about midfield, a gain of five, and it'll be third and three. And with the snowy conditions, I may be saying about quite a bit tonight. Yeah, you might be doing that, Greg. You know, a little interesting watching the Raiders start this game. Everybody expected them to come out throwing. Bill Belichick expected them to come out throwing the football. And he says, I'm going to be very conservative on defense early just to see what the Raiders are going to do. On third and three, Randy Jordan, number 28, is in the backfield for the Raiders. Gannon to throw for the first time tonight. Sideline pass is complete and out of bounds to Tim Brown. Does he have enough for the first down? Tim Brown's spot was enough, but the official spot looks to be a little bit short. I didn't see it was Tim Brown. I go, oh, he got a great spot, but it was he, it was Tim Brown uh, putting the football down. It definitely looks like it's going to be a little short, Greg. And John Gruden, not one to gamble, will kick it away. So on fourth and one, the Raider punting team will come on, led by Pro Bowl punter Shane Leckler. There is Leckler, and deep will be Troy Brown, but first we have a whistle on the field. Our referee tonight is Walt Coleman. Well, could there be a challenge to the spot of the football? 
I thought the spot was pretty good. Tim Brown was coming backwards. Oakland is challenging the forward progress spot on the field. Oh, as we take another look, what does that tell you? John Gruden thinks of how important this opening drive is. Oh, he's right. Let's watch Tim Brown. Where does he make the catch? <laughs> and, Greg, if you look at the yellow line, Tim Brown was across that yellow line when he made the catch of the football, and he had possession. And pushed back. Where is the farthest point of forward progress? Tim Brown catches the football. Got it. Feet are down. And, and then Ty Law pushes him out of bounds. You're allowed to challenge when it's a first down decision. If this was, uh, if it's going to be a first down. If they'd have done this on second down, you could not challenge it. I shouldn't say that. Anytime you're challenging, if it's a first down, you can do it. My lips are freezing. <laughs> well, once again, this shows just how important John Gruden thinks this opening drive is. Well, look where they are in the field. He knows this opening drive. They got it going. They showed a little physical dominance there early. And one of the coaches upstairs, very alert, told John Gruden it looks like he caught it for the first down. And that's why he challenged it. Ty Law pushed him back and out of bounds. And Walt Coleman taking a look, and we have our first challenge of the night. You know, we watched uh, the Raiders warm up, Greg, and we saw John Gruden look up in the air many times, and he almost smiled like he likes this situation. He likes the environment. It's, you know, it's hostile, and he always talks about that. You take your team on the road, you know, everybody's against you. It just makes you feel good that it's just going to be a competitive uh, atmosphere, and that's what he's got here tonight. You've always talked about that, how going into a hostile environment can sometimes serve to really fire you up. Yeah, it can. And, you know, you, everybody has to get on the, the bus together. You come over to the stadium together. All the fans, they don't like you, so it brings a little team unity. Look from above. Rich Gannon moves. Good shot right there, too. Well, Walt Coleman has made his decision. He's making his way out onto the field. All he has to do now is find that precise spot in the snow. After reviewing the play, we will re-spot the ball and then measure to see if it is a first down. Well, re-spotting the ball is better news for John Gruden than before. Well, that means the Raiders won the challenge. Now you got to find out if it is a first down. And the official marker, of course, is on the other side of the field, so don't even look at the one that's in uh, right there by the football. Either way, this is going to be pretty close. A little intrigued to go with the snow falling. The orange line is our superimposed first down line. It is not official. And they're short. Short by that much. So that'll cost the Raiders a timeout. No, it does, it does not. not cost the Raiders, the Raiders a timeout. I that's apologize. right. They won the challenge. The ball was respotted, but it still came up short of the first down. They keep the timeout, they lose the first down. Because so here's Shane Leckler to kick. Moving of the ball did not result in a first down. Oakland will be charged a timeout. Whoa. Now there will be another official gathering. So Walt's, not, Walt's not going to change his mind. That's right. No, if you challenge and it's not a first down, Greg, even though you win the original respite in the football, you do lose the timeout. Leckler kicks it away, and this is going to drift to the near sideline and into the end zone. Welcome back to snowy Foxborough, where Tom Brady will get his first chance at uh, 
the football this evening and one of the things we were talking with Tom Brady about two days ago was whether or not he'd be nervous today or not and he said a teammate came over and said you know what after the first snap it's just another football game you believe that and, and Greg I told you you couldn't believe it and I said look I've been there I agree with that once the game gets going he won't sit there and go wow this is different it's a playoff game Brady will throw screen the play. screen to the near side Mark Edwards And Edwards across the 25-yard line, about a nine-yard gain. Well, for New England, the offensive line may be the biggest surprise of the year. Damian Woody had an outstanding year at center. In the backfield, Antoine Smith along with Mark Edwards. Troy Brown, the pro bowler, and David Patton, and Rod Rutledge is the tight end. Now, the NFL observer has called down and said that the Oakland Raiders will not be charged a timeout. Second and one. Another screen. This is to J.R. Redmond. Redmond with running room across the 40, across the 45, close to midfield and a first down. 20 yard pickup on the play. William Thomas made the stop. A look at the Raider defense. Reagan Upshaw, Rod Coleman, Grady Jackson, Tony Bryant up front. The linebackers, they got to be smart tonight. Greg Beekert, you got to see those screens and react better to them. In the secondary, Charles Woodson, fourth straight Pro Bowl, along with Eric Allen on the corners, Anthony Dorsett and Johnny Harris are the safeties. Third play for the Patriots, Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator. It could be another screen, and it is. To the far side, complete to Falk, and Falk across midfield and close to the 45-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Well, the one thing, the Patriots, you got a young quarterback, Greg, you think, well, he might be nervous. You said it. One way to get rid of those nerves is to come out, throw some sure passes, three straight screens, catches the Raiders off guard, and the Patriots make all three of them work. Three straight completions. The line of scrimmage now just inside the 45-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Now, that'll slow down a pass rush if you throw three straight screens. Antoine Smith has first down yardage inside the 40. You know, we would watch practice on Friday, Greg, and we saw him run three straight screens. I said, can you start a game doing that? And they kind of looked at us and laughed. So what do you think? Can you can you fool a defense three straight times? And uh, we we thought they might come out with a night. They did. And yes, it caught the Raiders defense by surprise all three times. Well blocked by the running backs and offensive line. It's a New England first down at the 39 yard line of the Raiders. The pitch to Smith. Smith cuts it inside, escapes a tackler, makes it back to the line of scrimmage, and we have a penalty marker down. Face mask against the Raiders. Well, you know, one problem the Raiders defense they've had this year, when they give up big pass plays or big runs, is that they actually, they over-pursue too many players chase the football and nobody's there for cutbacks or in case somebody misses a tackle and well you won't have to worry about that tonight in this field I don't know if you can over pursue offside and a face mask call against the Raiders offside 94 defense that penalties decline incidental face mask 57 defense that penalty will be accepted five yards that penalty is on number 57 rod coleman and you see it right there antoine smith made it back to the line of scrimmage but tack on five yards and it'll be a first and five the what the other thing the raiders are really worried about on defense is the gadget plays the patriots love to run this one will go nowhere as William Thomas and Greg Beaker gang up on Antoine Smith. You know, you think back to the season, Greg, we saw some of the Patriots games throw back to the quarterback. We saw that against the Miami Dolphins. It was a huge play in the game. They've done double reverse passes down the field. So now when you come in to play them and 
we, we've talked about this before, the, the Raiders on defense, they're spending about half of their practice worrying about all the trick and gadget plays that the Patriots might run against them. There was a picture of Tom Brady making that reception on the front page of the newspaper. Today. Yeah, it was a nice catch. Antoine Smith on second and five, and he's wrapped up by Greg Beekert as he reached the line of scrimmage. And you know, the other thing too, the big Armin Katayan asked Bill Belichick, you know, they had a week off, played their last game of the season against the Carolina Panthers, and then another week off, and uh, Bill Belichick made it clear, and all the players to us, they said, no, it's all been good. We got rested, we had an extra week to plan for the Raiders. That's what they mainly did last week during their off week. They prepared for the Oakland Raiders, so big advantage for the Patriots. They spread the field on third and two, and the handoff is to Kevin Falk, and Falk is not going to reach the first down marker. Well, they gave the look like they might throw the football. Five wide receivers, Kevin Falk comes in the middle. Raiders had nothing to do with it. Good job inside. And there is, no, there is no sign of a punter or field goal kicker onto the field as Brady and the Patriots look at fourth and three. Perfect spot to go for it. Too long for a field goal. You're too close to punt the football, so no decision here. You go for it on fourth down. J.R. Redman, the only back behind Brady on fourth and three. Quick pass out here, incomplete. Snow continues to fall here in Foxborough in a scoreless first quarter, and Gannon and the Raiders take over at their own 32-32 yard line. Garner and Ritchie in the backfield, and Gannon with time, throws, and that is complete to Tim Brown and out of bounds. Let's go back to that fourth down call and play by the Patriots. Let me show you what happened. Tom Brady saw the receiver. Nobody covers him, but Charles Woodson recognizes it, runs over at the last second, and Brady basically gets double-crossed. Good job of seeing it. Before you can get the ball snapped, Woodson runs over and stops the fourth down try. The line of scrimmage, the Patriot 49. Gannon will throw again, far side, and that is complete to Jerry Porter. And Porter out of bounds at about the 45 yard line, a pickup of about five, and it'll be second and five. Well, you can see the Patriots being very conservative early now. The Raiders starting to open up their offense, and it was really interesting. Oh, rolling uh, Jerry Porter. Jerry Porter looks like he has shoulder problems. Porter, the big 6'2", 220-pound second-year man out of West Virginia. Second round draft pick last year. We'll take a time out here and come back and check on Porter after this. Jerry Porter has a jacket over that right shoulder and is being walked away. And here's what happened on the sideline. He slid on that right side. Garner and Ritchie in the backfield on second and five. Line of scrimmage the 45 yard line of the Patriots. The pitch for Garner. Trying to turn the corner and not much success there. Well, when you look at this Raider offense, Greg, we had some good laughs with Bill Belichick over the weekend. He's uh, uh, On Friday, he was talking about, how do you stop it? He goes, I just taught my defense this. Look, if Tim Brown and Jerry Rice are on the same side of the field, trust me, they're going to throw the football over where those two guys are. So let's just eliminate the other side. And he goes, because they have so many weapons, you can't double team everybody, so concentrate on the two wide receivers. Third and four. Gannon with time throws and right through the hands of Tim Brown. It's incomplete. And Leckler will come onto the field to kick it away again. Yes, you know, for all of the for all of the defensive genius yeah. that we attribute, sometimes it's really very simple. It is. Follow the good players. John Gruden is not designing ways to beat you with John Ritchie. He's going to do it with Jerry Rice and Tim Brown and Charlie Garner. Troy Brown is deep again. Leckler, low kick, bounces. Here's Brown. 15, 20, and out of bounds. Six minutes even remaining here in a snowy first quarter. And talk about even. You can't get any more even than those numbers. Patriots with their possession at their own 21-yard line. 
The pitch for Antoine Smith tries the right side and gets a couple. Digging up a little snow. Speaking of the snow, our man on the sideline is right in the middle of it. Here's Armin. Greg, that shoulder injury to Jerry Porter really points out to the condition of this field, which really began not too bad, kind of slippery and a little mushy beginning, but it has rapidly deteriorated now to basically concrete down here. John Ritchie telling me before the game, though, this harkens back to the days of yore, meaning we got an old-fashioned football game. Back to you. Yore was a good time to play football, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, Harmon. Second and six. Brady throws, and that's complete. Troy Brown making the catch. Pick up a three on the play. I'm sorry. For no, that's all right, Greg. I was going to say the one thing I've noticed the last couple of plays, the football, because of all the snow, it's getting a little wet and a little harder to handle. That time, Tom Brady, the ball got away from him just a little. And Greg Beekert, linebackers, you need a good day to tackle the Patriots, throw a lot of short passes over the middle. This figures to be another one on third and three. And we have a whistle. And we have a timeout called by the Oakland Raiders. You know, a couple of things, Greg, when you see that, Chuck Bresnahan told us a couple of times during the year that he just wants to make sure his defense just lines up properly. And you know, come on, it can't be that complicated. But you see so many formations now from offense, especially New England. Had a, they spread the field a lot. You got to get people in the right position. That's why they call the timeout. And remember last night I asked John Gruden, I said, are you going to do a lot of new things on defense to maybe trick the Raiders? And he looked at us and he goes, no. If I change it a lot, I'm afraid my players won't get it and we will make more mistakes. So, Well, well Bill Belichick told us it was really interesting that for such a very complex offense, the Raiders present a very simple defense. The Raiders just line up on defense and they just basically say, are you good enough physically or whatever to beat us? It's they do not complicate it too much. They're going to play man to man outside. They're going to put a safety in the middle and they're just going to try to beat you physically. Third and three and Brady spreads the field with five wide receivers. Now Redmond joins him in the backfield. Brady steps up, spins, and won't make the first down marker. Loose football, but it has been blown down. Reagan Upshaw and Elijah Alexander combining to put the stops to Brady. And on fourth down, that'll bring Ken Walter and the punting unit on. Good job that time. The Raider defense not fooled by all the motion and the formation by the New England offense, and they get Brady on the sack. Walter, left-footed punter. Tim Brown is deep. And Brown lets it bounce, and this will roll just inside the 30-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Eight offensive plays. The Raiders have run the ball four times, thrown it four times. Well, it has to change your game plan somewhat, Greg. The conditions are tough. I think the big, the big uh, thing it's going to change, the football laying on the ground, the snow, it's going to get wet. It just makes it a little harder for the quarterbacks to handle it. And the Raiders are going to a no-huddle offense. Second and nine. They Crockett did this. Is, I'm sorry, Bill Crockett is alone back, and we've got movement on the offensive line. I, I, I just gonna say they did this last week. They just do it to get the tempo going and get things going on their offense. All start, 76, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Steve Wisniewski in his 13th and final season. The fine left guard for the Oakland Raiders, who will call it quits once this season is over. And although John Gruden wants him back, he says there is nothing that's going to bring him back. Steve Wisniewski, he was talked out of retirement this past year by John Gruden. I don't think it's going to happen this time, but Rich Gannon, the, what we saw is not a hurry up. It's just a no huddle just to help their offense get the plays and catch the defense a little bit by surprise. Second and 14, Gannon throws near side, and that's complete to Brown and out of bounds. Well, when you watch Rich Gannon throw the football, 
We've had a couple games this year. We saw him once at Giant Stadium in the rain. He threw the football extremely well and accurate. He went to college at the University of Delaware, and I said, what about the snow and the conditions tomorrow? And he goes, ah, you know, it doesn't matter. He's, he's never phased by anything that goes on, and he's not worried about the conditions. Strangely enough, a one-time draft pick of the New England Patriots. Third and ten. With plenty of time, and he throws incomplete over the middle intended for Randy Jordan. So Gannon may be throwing it and holding it well enough. But his receivers haven't been able to hold on as they usually do. The other thing to watch too, Greg, is he drops back Rich Gannon. It might be hard for these defensive linemen to get the traction to get back to the quarterback on the pass rush. Leckler to kick it to Troy Brown. Barely got it away, and he got a terrific kick away. This one sends Brown all the way back, and he is buried at about the 15-yard line. Marquez, Pope, Brandon Jennings down on special teams. 19-yard line is the line of scrimmage for the Patriots. Antoine Smith for a couple out to about the 23. William Thomas, Greg Beekert with the stop on the running back who had four 100-yard games this season and had 1,157 on the year. Not bad for a guy that the Buffalo Bills decided not to keep. They let him go because of salary cap reasons. He told us on Friday, he says, look, or on Thursday, I came in here, signed a contract one day, go out, and they send me right out to practice, and I get to put the uniform on, and they're saying, here, take the running play. So right away, he knew he was going to be the starting running back for the New England Patriots. Smith again, and okay. this time gets knocked down at about the 25-yard line. And he is anxious, anxious to win a playoff game. He's played in two with Buffalo and lost them both. Well, he also said to us, Greg, he goes, you know, you watch me run. He goes, I don't have any wiggle. I just kind of go straight ahead. And he says, and guys get tired of hitting me, too, when it gets late in the game because Antoine Smith is a big running back, over 230 pounds. He runs hard, and what he likes to do, keep running up in there so in the fourth quarter, you don't come running up so fast to tackle him. Patriots looking for the first first down by either team this night. Brady over the middle. Knocked down, incomplete. Josh Tate got a hand on it to bat it down. Well, again, if you can't rush the passer, and that's what it looks like, it's going to be hard for defensive linemen to stand there, and when he gets ready to throw the football, jump up and get in his way. No penetration by the Raiders' defensive line. Dave does a good job of knocking the pass down. Charles Woodson is back this time to take the kick from Ken Walter. now by Johnny Harris and they're rolling and looking for the football and we have a penalty marker down looks like the flag could be against the Patriots Greg for interfering with the fair catch I couldn't tell what number it was Looks like it's Gerard Cherry, number 30, doing the ballet move past Charles Woodson. Interference with the opportunity to make a catch. Number 30 on the kicking team. 15 yards, first down. And in this game of field position, that is a big 15-yard penalty, and you can see it on the face of Bill Belichick. Well, you could also see, Greg, that he ran in to Charles Woodson, made contact. You know, so far as you watch this game, the Oakland Raiders offense looks like they're handling the conditions a lot better than the New England offense has. Well, that allows the Raiders to take possession now at midfield. 
with 58 seconds to play here in the first half as John Gruden looks on and tries to figure out just what's going to work on offense here tonight in these conditions. Brown goes in motion. Gannon pump fakes, throws far side, and that's complete and enough for the first down to Charlie Garner. Well, I said to you earlier, Bill Belichick said, Rich Gannon, you know, he's got all the tricks. He uses his snap count. He, he does fake shifts to try to make you declare what your defense is going to do. And, and the other one are the pump fakes. He's always pump faking. And that time, he pump fakes to the left and then turns and throws the football all the way to the right sideline, and they pick up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the Patriot 38. Garner following Richie around the left side, tries to cut behind him and doesn't get much. Roman Pfeiffer making the stop. You know, one thing that, that Bill Belichick was talking about, uh, Rich Gannon, he said not only does he read the blitz well and he audibles accordingly, and they blitz the audible, they audible to the play that beats the blitz. <laughs> Well, there's a reason why he's been so successful, Greg, the last three years, and he's just well-schooled and in the perfect offense by him, designed by John Gruden. It fits him extremely well. And Rich Gannon decides not to run a play before time expires here in the first quarter. And so they'll go to the other end of the field. Rich Gannon, five out of seven, throwing the ball on this snowy night for 41 yards. The line of scrimmage, the New England 37-yard line. Second and nine. Gannon with all kinds of time. Throws to the far side, and that is complete to number 87, Jeremy Brigham. And Brigham very close to a first down. Well, the one thing I'm noticing, and I said it a little earlier, is that Rich Gannon and the quarterbacks, the pass rush, the footing must be too tough for him. They're not getting near the quarterback. And look how long Rich Gannon has to throw the football. And I saw myself, I saw three receivers open down the field. So Gannon, you give him time, five wide or five receivers down the field, gonna be hard to cover. Them. To the 27 and a first down, and Tyrone Wheatley into the game, and he gets the handoff and goes off right tackle. Behind the Pro Bowl tackle Lincoln Kennedy. You know, you were talking about Rich Gannon a little earlier, Greg, and Jerry Rice was in the room with us yesterday. We're talking to Rich Gannon, and I bring up the fact. I said, you know, Rich, back is it true the story back when you were coming out of college? A coach came up to visit you at Delaware, and he wanted to see you do the backpedal because everybody was talking about him being a defensive back, and he said to the coach, hey, look, I'm not doing no backpedals. If I play in the National Football League, it's going to be as a quarterback. And Jerry Rice loved it because he had a little ammo to go against Rich Gannon. Gannon throws up the middle, incomplete, ball thrown just behind Tim Brown. Ty Law was there. Well, that's the first time that New England Patriots took a chance. They blitz Rich Gannon. They play man coverage down the field. That means everybody has one receiver to cover, and Ty Law all over Tim Brown. Look at that good play. Football thrown behind Tim Brown, but still good. Good play by Ty Law. Third and seven at the 25-yard line. This represents the deepest penetration by either team so far tonight. Quick pass, and that's complete. And Jerry Rice, with his first catch of the night, has enough for a first down. Well, again, the Patriots, they're getting into what they feel. They feel more comfortable on defense, so they're blitzing Rich Cannon. And that's why Jerry Rice is so wide open. The blitz coming from Rich Gannon's right side. He turns, throws to his left. No defenders in the way for him to throw to Jerry Rice. Every career playoff appearance, he has at least one reception. Of course, he comes off that monster game last week against the New York Jets. First down. This is Wheatley. And not much there for Wheatley. Well, you know, Greg, we talked about talking to Rich Gannon. Jerry Rice was in there. and. Boy, how, how excited and was Jerry Rice to be his age, play so many games, do so many great things in the National Football League, and he couldn't wait to come out here. 
he's been hey he wanted to show everybody he wasn't done I think he proved his point this year Seven, with the Raiders. 17th season in the league you could see how bubbly he was in the interview that Deion Sanders did with him on the pregame show and he was every bit looking like a rookie when he was talking to us yesterday second and nine Gannon looking for the end zone has a man touchdown James Jett to James Jett. James Jett caught two passes for 19 yards and no touchdown during the regular season. Comes up with a 13-yard TD here. Well, the New England Patriots, they might be thinking twice about blitzing the quarterback, Rich Gannon. They've done it three times, and look what happens down the field. He recognizes it. He goes to the receiver farthest down the field. That's James Jett, who is open for the touchdown. You have to figure James Jett is there because of the injury earlier to Jerry Porter. Janikowski's kick is good. Look at James Jett against Terrence Shaw. James Jett, right from the start, makes the move and gets by him. And Terrence Shaw goes to the inside. The safety was in the middle of the field. Terrence Shaw should have gone to the outside, but nice move at the line of scrimmage allows James Jett to get past him and catch a touchdown pass. You saw that bottom line. The Patriots with the best red zone defense in the AFC. The Raiders solve it for a 7-0 lead. Janikowski's kick. This is Patrick Pass. And he is hit and decked by Eric Barton, number 50, after a 13-yard return. And we remind you, Coming up on the next tell halftime report, join Jim, Mike, Randy, and Jerry. First half analysis, and the latest playoff news, and they will visit with Baltimore head coach Brian Billick. It's all coming up on the next tell halftime report. Well, you watch this Raider team, Greg. It's interesting. Rich Gannon was actually telling us yesterday maybe the fact that we started out in eight and two, we started looking to the playoffs a little too early, but the, they lost those games. And a couple of the players even said to us, maybe losing those last three games brought us back together and it just made us more determined to play well once we got in the playoffs. Brady to throw from the 25-yard line. He loses the rush, throws incomplete over the middle. It was intended for Antoine Smith, and Johnny Harris was there to bat it down, and it's second and ten. Well, the Patriots have been a little conservative on offense, and I think now that they've fallen behind 7 up. They realize the Oakland Raiders might move the football against us, so you must open it up and give some of your skilled players a chance to make some plays down the field. J.R. Redmond is onto the field now as a wide receiver as they spread the field. Brady pulls it down, now throws, and it's intercepted. Johnny Harris. Harris weaves his way back and now falls down at about the 47-yard line. It's a first down for the Raiders. Well, the Raiders are just playing the zone defense. They're not attacking the wide receivers. And Tom Brady did something he hasn't done much of this year. He takes a chance. Watch, the coverage is down the field. Tries to stick one into a really tight spot. And Johnny Harris does the right thing. Stays outside, stays behind the wide receiver in perfect position to make the interception. So it's another, it's a big turnover for the Oakland Raiders and they have field position once again. Brady, sixth interception. He threw 12 during the season. Gannon spreads the field on first down. With lots of time. On the move to the near sideline, runs out of bounds. Well, Greg, just to go back to that last play, patience, it's an unbelievable, can you keep your patience as a quarterback? And Tom Brady lost his patience a little bit, took a chance, and when you're playing good football teams and you gamble sometimes, not at the appropriate time, you, you throw the interception. And again, Rich Gannon having all day to throw the football. The conditions are not getting better. The snow continues to fall, and it's beginning to pile up on the field. Randy Jordan in the backfield on second and nine. Whistle blows. See if the play clock expired on Gannon. No. Nope. One of the officials is indicating a false start. Prior to the snap, 
False start, 81, offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. I thought you were gonna say it was a delay game. If it would have been Greg, see Rich Gannon was gonna blame John Gruden because it took him <laughs> too long to get the play in. So. As we have documented throughout the season, they do share a conversation or two during well, the game. Well, see, it's a good thing it's a night game. So John Gruden got to sleep in a little today because he told us earlier in the year, he says, hey, you need a good night's sleep to deal with Rich Gannon on game day. He is high maintenance. So, but he's a terrific football player and a quarterback. On second and 14, the screen out here to Garner. Garner down the sideline and is knocked out of bounds. You know, the other thing, too, getting ready for this game, John Gruden says, ah, oh, you know, that Bella, he called him Bella Checker. Bella Checker had a muff to get ready for, so he was quite concerned with maybe seeing a lot of new defenses, some trick defenses that maybe they didn't have time to prepare for. Because what did John Gruden say to us? They watched four games, and he says it was a different defense all four games. So we're just going to prepare for everything. Third and five from the 36. Here comes the blitz. Raiders do a good job of picking it up, and that pass is knocked down by Otis Smith, intended for Brown coming across the field. Oh, it's terrific. Pick up by the Raiders offensive line. Rich Gannon, nobody around him. Watch the blitz. Here they come. First all out blitz by the Patriots. Nobody around the quarterback. And he just throws it behind Tim Brown. And Otis Smith running hard, catches up, knocks it down. Boy, that's tough coverage for a defensive back. Chase Tim Brown across the formation. Leckler. Aiming to get it down inside the 10. He'll do that. Going to roll down. And it went into the end zone. He lost track where he was. He couldn't tell he was in the end zone. That's the rookie, Derek Gibson, kept backing up, backing up. 10-20 to play here in the first half. The Raiders with a 7-0 lead. And Tom Brady back on the field, thankful that at least that last turnover, that interception, didn't turn into points on the board for Oakland. Yeah, unfortunately, not back up to the one-yard line, too, Greg. And you, know, you, can't, you can't blame Gibson from the Raiders because as he's going down there, you, hey, look, it's hard to tell. What's a, one pile of snow looks like the same as the next one, right? So he says, hey, and it, it's just, it's tough. You really got to pay attention to the little things in conditions like this. Line of scrimmage is the 22-yard line. The pitch for Smith, left side, running room, first down yardage and more before he's finally knocked down on the near side of the field by Anthony Dorsett. Pickup well, of 12 on the play. This is what the New England Patriots want to do. They want to run, toss the ball to Antoine Smith. He goes, this is my favorite play because he has the option of going outside or cutting it back inside. And this time, Damian Woody, over 300 pounds, an excellent Offensive lineman who can pull around the corner from the center position and still make the blocks. Smith again, and this one will lose yardage. <laughs> Eric Barton, Rod Coleman with the stop. Loss of one on the play, and it'll be second and 11. And the snow continues to fall. You pointed it out earlier, Phil, as we saw that shot of Chuck Bresnahan. It's beginning to pile up on the caps of those coaches on the sideline. There's Charlie Weiss, offensive coordinator. He's got some. In fact, he had a hood full. <laughs> well, look at the top of the helmets. They're getting about a half inch on the top of their helmets. Play fake. And Brady eludes the rush, goes deep down the field for Patton. Incomplete. Eric Allen was there. The pass a bit underthrown. Well, the Patriots had exactly what they wanted. The play action fake. They're going to have David Patton deep. Nobody back there to help him, but... The Raiders push the pile. Grady Jackson. Roberts also pushing. And you can see Eric Allen's to the outside, but the football thrown late, hangs up in the air, and he almost makes the interception. But if he had protection, Tom Brady would have had time or had a chance to get a big completion down the field. Brady now 0 for his last four with an interception. And a third and 11. 
is Smith. And Smith going to go nowhere thanks to Rod Coleman who wraps him up. Well, I'm really interested to watch the New England offensive line against the defensive line of the Raiders because what did Grady Jackson say to us yesterday? We're talking to him, and he says, the New England offensive line is slow, and we can do about what we want against them, and so far, they've done a real good job. Grady also said he'd like to get his hands on a pass one of these days. Hard. Never had a chance to bat one down. It's hard to when you're 350. Walters kick. Charles Woodson going to let it bounce and it's going to roll to a stop inside the 40 yard line. Pro Bowl safety lawyer Malloy taking a look through the snowflakes as the Raiders have a first down at their own 35 yard line. 748 to play in the first half. They lead it by a touchdown. See if the left tackle Barry Sims drew that side of the defense offside. False start, 65. Offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. So it'll be first and 15 as the line of scrimmage moves back to the 30. Somewhere in that snow. There's Tom Brady on the sideline. Yeah, the. Patriots need to need to find a way to get Tom Brady back in the game and get his confidence back after the interception. The pitch for Garner. Garner looking for running room and not much there. And this Oakland offense was only penalized once last week in the victory over the Jets. Their third penalty here tonight. Well, they're on the road. Crowd noise is a factor. And I would think the snow might distract you just a little bit. Just a touch. See, the one thing is, Greg, at least tonight we know which way the wind's blowing. Because <laughs> there's enough snow out there. You just, well, it's blowing left to right right now. Gannon the throw on second and 14. Pump fakes and goes down. Teddy Bruschi, number 54, the middle linebacker, led the charge. Well, the protection was good enough. But Rich Gannon cannot get rid of the football because the coverage was excellent down the field. 54, Teddy Bruschi. Ah, uh, circled the wrong guy. He delayed the blitz. He waited to see the hole. Look at that. Nice move around and gets the sack on Rich Gannon. First sack of the night. As you look at the numbers on Teddy Bruschi, who told us, you know, I kept myself on the team by rushing the passer and playing special teams. Kind of created a position for himself when he first came to New England. And now a big third and 20 facing Gannon and the Raiders. Gannon on the move and not going to get much. Anthony Pleasant, number 98, with the stop. Well, you talk about Teddy Bruschi. Greg playing the middle linebacker position. Just signed a new contract with the Patriots and negotiated himself. But he's done his last two. Just do some research. It's not that hard to figure out, and he's just done a terrific job. They say he has some of the best instincts of any defensive player they have on the team. Eighth punt of the night. Lofted into the night by Sheckler. By Leckler. Troy Brown with the tackle. We talked at the very start of the evening, Phil, about maybe this should be just another game or is it for Tom Brady? What do you think about his self-confidence at this point? They really haven't moved the ball very much and he's turned the ball over. Yeah, great. They got off to a good start. That made him feel good. But that interception for any quarterback, and especially, you know, for a young quarterback, if this was a regular season game, he'd feel the same way he does right now. A little unsure, wants to get going again, and I think that it's up to Charlie Weiss to call a few more plays that take the thinking out of it, let him get some safe completions. Antoine Smith carried for five, and it'll be second and five. There's Charlie Weiss. Line of scrimmage, the 33 yard line. The give is to Smith again, and Smith following his way, just shy of first down yardage. Greg Beekert made the stop. 
go back to the big hard running running back Antoine Smith. Well, we, we said it earlier. He's not Antoine Smith admits he doesn't have a lot of wiggle. So when you get a field like this, I don't think he's going to try to fake anybody out. And Greg Beekert, middle linebacker. Nice job getting off the block of Joe Andrusi and gets in on the tackle. Third and short yardage. J.R. Redmond and Redmond trying to fight for a first down. He didn't appear to get there. Well, here's what's happening. The Raiders are looking over there going, hey, it's third and shorter, the situations, and they know the Patriots are not going to throw it. So they're gambling, coming to the line of scrimmage, and stopping them short of those first downs. New England now 0 for 5 on third down tonight. They're doing that because of the young quarterback, and they know that the Patriots are trying to play it safe. Playing the run, stopping them short. That's Woodson. Awaiting the punt from Ken Walter. Fair catch called for and made by Woodson. And we have 3.56 to play here in the first half and all of this snow naturally brings to mind that game back when this was Schaefer Stadium, December the 12th, 1982, when the guy who became notorious in these parts and in Miami as well, Mark Henderson, plowed a clear path for field goal kicker John Smith, the 33-yard game winner as the Patriots came away with a 3-0 win. Matt Cavanaugh was the holder, now the offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. On first down, the Raiders from their own 27, and straight ahead, Charlie Garner has yardage. Out close to a first down. Boy, nice job. The fake reverse. That slows the defense down every time. Faking it's Tim Brown going around to the outside and Charlie Garner. Greg, we talked about it. He only knows one speed. That's all out. Just a little bit short of out of control. On first down. And bouncing off tacklers and moving to the outside is Garner again. And you talked about he's, he's just a relentless runner. Oh, he is. And everything he does. And John Gruden even says the only thing that bothers him, he goes, he has to take himself out of the game a lot. Here he comes out of the game now because he uses up so much energy every time he gets the football on the run or the pass that he can only do it two or three plays in a row before they give him a rest. He's got big John Ritchie blocking in front of him, and Ritchie is out of the game now, too. Second and six, Tyrone Wheatley has come on to replace Garner in the backfield. Gannon throws this side, complete to Tim Brown and out of bounds. Well, the Raiders trying to mix up the, the New England defense. Usually when Tyrone Wheatley comes in, it's always a run. So they send him in, hoping they'll think run and trick him up with the pass. But New England on the blitz made Rich Gannon get rid of the football real quick. Oakland only one out of six on third down conversions tonight. Patriots still complete a third down conversion. And now Garner back into the lineup on third and four. The pitch for Garner. Stopped on the far side and a big stop for the Patriot defense. Ty Law and Tim Bucky Jones coming up to make the play. And with that, we come to the two-minute warning. This is the tenth punt of the night. That's Troy Brown. Line drive kick, and it's not going to go anywhere. It hits and sticks. And we have a minute 51 to play in the first half. 33-yard punt and no return. As you look at Brady's numbers, he comes back onto the field. And there's Drew Bledsoe. Ninth-year quarterback. 
first round draft pick of this franchise back in 93 and an injury in week two. Yeah and a lot of people asked me during the week if Tom Brady struggles you think they'll put Drew Bledsoe in and I said no I don't know if, if Tom Brady could struggle enough for Bill Belichick to lift him out. They gone 14 games with the quarterback they're not going to change that. Brady pulling over the middle and he's got Troy Brown. Brown across midfield and inside the 45 yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Well we saw something right there that the Patriot coaches pointed out to me during the week. We were up here Tom Brady has an excellent arm. He can throw the football with power and he can throw it far down the field too. So there was a misconception that maybe his arm is not that strong. Not true. Nothing wrong with that pass from the Oakland 45. Patriots have all three of their timeouts remaining. Short pass now, and that's complete to the tight end, Jermaine Wiggins. And Wiggins brought to a stop. Well, we were wondering about Tom Brady's confidence a little earlier. A couple of quick plays like that will help reinstall for the young man. Well, that's what he needed, Greg. He needed one of those throws down the field where he throws it perfectly, and it, it just feels good. And John Gruden said it right as he was. I said, could you evaluate uh, Tom Brady for me? And he said some nice things, not making mistakes, all this. He goes, man, he's got a nice stroke. And that man is throwing motion. And it is. It's an excellent throw in motion. It allows him to put a lot of spin on the ball, which is important. Playing up here in this area. And he has a lot of power behind it when he needs it. Second and three. Brady throws and throws it away. He was under pressure. The pass intended for Kevin Falk, ostensibly. It'll be third and three. Well, good job of the Raider defensive line. When you talk about stop and screen plays in the National Football League, the defensive line has to do it. They must recognize it, pull off the pass rush, and then go tackle the pass receiver, even if you get him from, from behind, to stop, to stop the, the game to make it short. Kevin Falk in the backfield on third and three. Here comes the Raider blitz. Brady throws far side, too high, intended for David Patton. Well, there's a reason why he threw it high, Greg. The blitz, he had to stand in and throw it over the top of a defensive player that was coming in untouched. It was Johnny Harris, the safety. So Brady had no choice to let go of the football high. So Walter comes in to kick. And John Gruden is telling Charles Woodson, do not catch the football. Walter almost straight up. Gets a nice bounce. And comes to a stop at about the 11 yard line. Pretty even numbers here in the first half. And we're going to see the Raiders just run out the clock. Here at the end of the first half. The Patriots still two timeouts. And now the clock stops with 35 seconds to play as the Patriots use their second. Particularly in snowy conditions, you never could tell what might happen down deep here. Well, that's right. Make them snap the football and handle it a couple more times. That's the idea, and that's what you, that's what you should do. John Gruden was hoping they wouldn't, knew the situation. That's why he told Charles Woodson on the fourth down to not even field the punt. Well, these Raiders lost their regular season finale to the Jets. And then in a replay last weekend, knocked off the Jets. And then traveled eastward to face these New England Patriots. Phil, are you surprised that the Patriots didn't go for it on fourth and three with the uh, field position they had? No, I'm not, Greg. The Oakland Raiders still had one timeout. They've shown the ability to move the football at times, so I think you had to punt it. Well, that'll be the final play of the first half, which has seen more punts than should be allowed in the common game today. But I think overall, Greg, with the conditions, both teams handled it pretty well. Let's go down to Armin Katay and Armin. 
Coach, do you feel the need at all to force the issue in the second half, or do you rely on the defense in these conditions? <laughs> We're going to try and win this game any way we can, whether it be special teams, offense, or defense. It's tough playing conditions right now, but we feel like we can move the ball and play good, solid yeah, football. All right, Coach. Thanks, sir. Great. All right, Aaron. A Rich Gannon touchdown pass is the only difference. Our halftime score, Oakland 7 and New England nothing. Rich Gannon throwing the football fairly accurately. They just cannot make that one play that keeps the drive going or catch that short pass and make a long run afterwards. Patriots get the football here in the second half. From the 11-yard line, it's Patrick Pass. And Pass dragged down at about the 32 or 33-yard line. Let's go down to Armin Katayan. Armin. Greg, the message from Bill Belichick is very simple down here. We're not going to change anything. We're going to do what we do. We've won 11 games this season. We're only down 7 nothing. We're not going to change anything right now. We're going to try to win this game with the way we've won all the others. Back to you. All right, Armin. You know, I gave Armin my hat before the game started. <laughs> so what a decision by Armin Katayan. It's snowing, it's freezing, and he's... The only, the only thing I can surmise, that must be some bad hat. <laughs> First down from their own 33-yard line for the Patriots. Play fake, Brady over the middle. Incomplete and a diving save by Eric Allen. The pass intended for David Patton. Yeah, I know what Tom Brady's thinking. Are you kidding me? The defense is exactly what we want, and he throws the football perfectly. But look at Eric Allen, always looking at the quarterback, and then the time is proper. He goes underneath the receiver to make it an incomplete pass. And Eric Allen, he has seen that route, that pass, 500 times in his career. That makes it easy for him to go underneath. Six Pro Bowls in his 14th season. Here's a screen. This is Mark Edwards. And Edwards spins away from one tackler and out across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Rod Coleman, Tony Bryant with the tackle as you look at the halftime numbers and you see just how closely a contested contest this is. Well, the, the difference in the game, the Raiders... The interference on his fair catch by Charles Woodson. They got good field position, and they took it in for the score. The Patriots, one scoring opportunity. They miss a fourth down conversion. Third and one and from they have, the 42. I'm sorry, Greg. They have not converted one third down yet today. Play fake to Smith. The lob is complete to Edwards. Edwards has a first down across midfield and into Oakland territory. And a nice bit of ball handling by Tom Brady. And that's the change from the first half. In the first half, every time they were running the football, the Raiders play and run. Nobody gets Mark Edwards as he slips out of the backfield and goes for the first down. And I just looked at that replay, Greg. There is a lot of snow on the field. <laughs> Did you see Rod Rutledge reach up and think that maybe his quarterback overthrew him? Mark Edwards was the deeper receiver. First down now at the Raider 46. 48. 48. On the reverse, and Troy Brown is going to get tackled back at its, his own 45-yard line. Oh, the Patriots trying to guess. Maybe the Raiders will be aggressive, and we could take advantage of that aggressiveness, but everybody up the field, Troy Brown has nowhere to go. It's a blitz by the Raiders. Good job. Good job at the top of your screen. Grady Jackson gets penetration. Reagan Upshaw. They are not fooled. Boy, Grady Jackson playing terrific from the inside. From the 45-yard line, it's now a second and 19. Grady with all kinds of time and throws to a wide open David Patton. And Patton inside the 30-yard line, and that's enough for a first down. This is what I like. Play action pass gives Tom Brady extra time to throw the football, but it also gives the wide receivers a chance to get down the field. Brady wants to throw it over the middle. What a decision. Doesn't let it go, and then comes outside and finds Patton wide open. See, Eric Allen, he went to the inside, but he's, look, he was watching the quarterback. That allowed David Patton to get open. Just atrocious footing for both sides in the snow from the 30-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. The 
pitch for Smith. Left side. And pulls his way to about the 26. Pitch on Smith, the ball carrier. Pick up a four, and it'll be second and six. Well, we're just seeing a different New England offense now. They've saw they've they've seen enough from the Raider defense. They have a good idea what's going to go on, and they're calling play action passes down the field. And the best running play they've had so far today, I think, toss it to Antoine Smith, give him two options to run the football and pick up some good yards. This is the deepest penetration that the New England Patriots have achieved so far tonight. Second and six, J.R. Redmond is in the backfield behind Brady. How can you tell? <laughs> Here's Redmond, and Redmond is corralled by Elijah Alexander, who was all over that play. Well, the Raiders say, well, if you want to change what you're doing on offense, we'll just change a little bit on defense. And Raiders, not a big blitzing team. You see Beekert, look at Elijah Alexander. Nice job, like a running back. Look for the hole, he finds it inside, runs through it, makes the tackle. A loss of two on the play makes it a third and eight. Once again, Redmond is the back in the backfield with Brady. Brady with time, steps up, throws over the middle and has his man inside the 10 yard line. That'll be a first down to David Patton. Wow, what a job by Tom Brady. Good job by the offensive line. It's taken a while for the receivers to get open down the field and Brady, very patient. But boy, the footy looks good to David Patton. He is flying down the field. Nice catch and Tom Brady had to feel that he was getting Getting ready to get hit, and he was. Reagan Upshaw, Roderick Coleman both hitting the quarterback, but a perfect throw. Patton had no catches in the first half, two on this drive. Antoine Smith to the five. And a little pushing and shoving in the snow. Yeah, that's what we want to see. I want to see the emotions get going. Now our line, our superimposed line, is the goal line. But you can tell a little more intensity, a sense of urgency by the Patriots coming out after halftime. Smith and Edwards in the backfield on second and goal. No, the lob to the end zone, incomplete. David Patton, the intended receiver, fine play fake by Brady. Oh, it was excellent, good idea. But what happens is they're about five yards too close for that play. The Raiders were completely fooled, but because there was so little room to throw it, Brady, being careful, doesn't want to throw the interception or make a mistake, throws it too high. So now it's third and goal. Johnny Harris came up to stop the run. Even though he was fooled, the back of the end zone protected him. Two tight ends. Brady going to throw for it. Has time. Goes and overthrows his receiver, Rod Rutledge. That one he had wide open. Well, I do not think the football is slipping out of his hands. Look at it. Nice spiral, throws it exactly where he wants. His judgment is just a little off. That's why it was a little too high for Rod Rutledge to catch. Adam Vinatieri comes on for the field goal attempt. This appears to be about a 23-yard field goal attempt. Adam Vinatieri on the attempt to field goal. Kick is away and the kick is good. They get three. After going 0 for 6 on third down in the first half, the Patriots go 2 for 3 on third downs in that 12 play drive to get the field goal. Vinatieri yeah. to kick to Terry Kirby. Sorry, Greg. They had some excellent plays in that drive that ought to boost the whole team's confidence. On the hop from the 15 yard line, Kirby. And Kirby to about the 37-yard line. 
829 to play in the third quarter. Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan, and our ace CBS Sports crew at Foxborough Stadium. 7-3 Raiders. The ball at the open 37 and Gannon to throw out to the far side and that is complete to Garner and Garner is out of bounds. Run out of bounds by Teddy Bruschi. Well, you know, Greg, the same thing we were talking about in the New England offense. Maybe we'll see the same thing for the New England defense. Now they feel like they've seen all the new plays from the, the Raiders offense and Bill Belichick said it and Romeo Cornell, the defensive coordinator. Once we can control that first onslaught of all their new plays and formations, then we can come out and attack. They attacked that first play, and they're going to do it again here in the second down. Gannon looks, looks, sidearms, incomplete. Intended for James Jett. And Terrell Buckley was there to make the play. Uh, Terrell Buckley, what a, what a nice pickup by the... New England Patriots, he's the third defensive back that comes in. So when you have a passing situation or three wide receivers, Terrell Buckley is excellent at covering that third wide receiver. Not afraid to take chances. Definitely not afraid of making a big play for the defense either. Patriot fans come to their feet. They smell something here on third and nine from the 38. Another blitz. They pick it up. Gannon throws. Brown crossing pattern. First down. Out of bounds. Gannon's pass across midfield to about the 47-yard line. Well, what happens when you go after the Oakland Raiders? Tim Brown's going to go across the middle. There he comes across the middle of your screen. Do you see what happened to Ty Law? Trying to follow receivers across the field, you end up running into your own teammates. Ty Law ran into Lawyer Malloy. Not able to keep up with Tim Brown, who gets the first down. Raiders into Patriot territory at the 47-yard line, and the give straight ahead. Wheatley bounces off one tackler, and they have gotten a yard on the play. Boy, Greg, every time we do a Raider game, we see it, and we, we hear it from the opposing defense. The Raiders run across the field shallow so much that defenders have such a hard time of fighting through, not only chasing the guy, but fighting through their own teammates. That seems to be their biggest problem. And Tim Brown, he's done it about, you know, he's done it so much, he's good at avoiding trouble because he's done it for three years, four years with John Gruden. Gannon, throw, and that's complete. And that's enough for a first down to Jerry Rice, his second catch of the night. Jerry Rice. When you think about his days with the San Francisco 49ers, a lot of short plays across the middle, but nice double move. Fake like he was going to go deep. Gannon eludes the sack and throws over the middle and hits James Jett. Well, you got the perfect defense call. You even fool Rich Gannon and John Gruden. Then you don't make the play. Otis Smith coming off the corner. Perfect blitz on first down, misses the tackle. As we were talking to John Gruden, how did he say he was getting Rich Gannon ready to face this defense? Oh. You never know. He said, we throw a 4-3, a 3-4, nickel blitz, and everything, one right after the other. He said in practice, I did everything to make it as difficult as I could for Rich Gannon to get him ready for this game. Here's Garner. And Garner inside the 25-yard line. You know, Greg, I'm going to go back to Jerry Rice. We saw that rally man in a couple things. Everybody talks about when they're going to play the Raiders, well, we're going to hit them when they come across the middle. And what did Jerry Rice say? Oh, like that's something new. You know, I've played in the league for 17 years. I'm not quite afraid or worried about getting hit when I go over the middle. Every team tries to do that to me and Tim Brown. Second and eight from the Patriot 24. Cannon throws to the near side, and that's Rice again. And Rice is out of bounds, just short of the 20-yard line. You know, I think we've talked about this many times. That I, you know, listen, I'm like golf fans. I thought Jerry Rice was probably done. The injuries were going to take it away from him, and we told you earlier he wanted to prove to everybody that his career was not done. But also coming to the Raiders.
getting to do all these different things that are new to him. I think that's what really uh, brought back enthusiasm for the game for him. He loves playing with Rich Gannon, loves playing with Tim Brown. Third and four. Gannon throws, and that's incomplete. Ty Law was all over Jerry Rice, the intended receiver. That'll make Ty Law feel good. I was watching him after these last couple of throws to Jerry Rice. He was getting upset because he knew he was close. This time, football in the air makes the play. That's what you always, to make yourself or to be a, a really good defensive back, you got to make the play when the football's in the air and Ty Law did it that time. Sebastian Janikowski will attempt this one from about 38 yards out. Out of the snow, on its way, looks good, and it is. 10-3 Raiders, 4-14 to play here in the third quarter. Rich Gannon, five out of seven and 40 yards passing on that drive as Janikowski kicks it away. To the near side of the field at the 10-yard line is Patrick Pass. And Pass just across the 20-yard line before he was hit by Travian Smith. The snow continues to fall convincingly here in Foxborough, which is to say that it doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon, does it? What other way does it fall? Sometimes does it like not want to fall hesitantly and lightly. Yeah. It's none of that. 22 yard line. Patriots begin. And Brady lost the football. Let's see what the officials call it. Reagan Upshaw was the man in on the quarterback. Looked like a fumble, Greg. That's what it looked like. Tom Brady does his. Arm come forward with the football. No, not even close. Troy Brown wide open over the, over the middle, but Tom Brady does a good job. He knows it's a fumble. Then he finds it and falls on it. Loss of seven on the play, and it's second and 17. Reagan Upshaw all year long. Tremendous rusher from the outside. The pass is dropped by Jermaine Wiggins, the tight end. And uh, you can tell by the reaction, he had the ball and blockers in front of him. Yeah, it's not the conditions that made him drop it. Wiggins wanted to catch the football and run with it a little too quickly, took his, took his eye off the football. That's why he dropped it. Third and 17. Well, the Patriots, after the last drive, I know they felt good. They had some rhythm, some momentum, and they... Let it get away from him in those first two plays. Brady pumps, now throws incomplete to the near side of the field, intended for number 84, Fred Coleman. And on this side of the field, Eric Allen, who has played a whale of a football game. Yeah, he's played well. I've noticed that Tom Brady has not attacked his old college teammate, Charles Woodson, on the other side too often today. So most of the plays in the passing game designed to go against Eric Allen. Well, a good shot of how deep the snow is on the field. Woodson standing just the other side of midfield for this kick. Walter. Line drive falls short of midfield. Woodson picks it up and is down at about his own 48 yard line. Gannon throws out here and that pass is knocked down. Bobby Hamilton, number 91, is the one who got his hand on the football. It'll be second and 10. Both these teams have been throwing the ball around today. Yeah, you, you think, well, the conditions, they'll play more conservative, not throw the football as much, and we've seen more passes than runs. And Bobby, Bobby Hamilton, John Gruden brought his name up first when he came in the meeting last night. He says, hey, this Bobby Hamilton, a lot of people think his career might be on the downside, but he's played well all year long. Second and 10, Raiders from their own 49. Gannon, plenty of time, and that one also knocked down. That time, the rookie, Richard Seymour. And it'll be third and ten. Well, the Raiders send a lot of people down the field. Charlie Garner sneaks out of the backfield, 
Watch Richard Seymour 93. If he doesn't knock it down, you're going to see a running back open with nobody around him. Good job by the big rookie defensive lineman. Third and ten. And once again, the Patriot fans come to life. Here comes the blitz. That pass is complete to Jerry Rice. First down and more as he takes it to about the 30-yard line of the New England Patriots. What a move by Jerry Rice. Going against Buckley. It's a blitz by the Patriots. Good pickup. Rich Gannon going to Jerry Rice one-on-one -on -one all the way. He faked inside. Buckley goes for the fake. He broke back outside, and it is a perfect throw. Rich Gannon. Gotcha. You bet. <laughs> well, he knows. Big situation. Good throw and an excellent route by Jerry Rice. Really well done. Two and a half minutes to play in the third. This is Garner. Garner off left tackle for a couple. Greg, I just got to go back. I mean, it's just Jerry Rice is like, he had a good year, but he's really coming to life here the last two games. But some nice catches here in the second half. Now 48 yards for the game. We talked earlier about how he just loves playing with Rich Gannon. He said he was in training camp and he jumped all over a young receiver who ran a wrong route and he says Rich Cannon just wants to win. He looks and goes oh man what have I got myself in here this quarterback's crazy. Under pressure Cannon on the move throws and complete. Richard Seymour was the man in hot pursuit. Well Richard Seymour he's all fired up getting back in the game because Riddick Parker started the football game. We're not real sure why, but coming right through, hardly blocked. It's a blitz. Laurie Malloy in. And Rich Richard Gannon. Seymour chasing the quarterback. Gannon looking for some help from the official. Didn't get it. Third and eight from the 27. On the quick slant, incomplete intended for Tim Brown. Brown wants a penalty flag that is not forthcoming and here comes Gannon and Gruden is pleading his case from the sideline. Well, we're, we're a long way away but I think it's a good play. Ty Law's right hand it might go on the back of Tim Brown but it does not look like it obstructed anything. No it does not. Does he turn him? Does he push him? He laid the hand on but it had nothing to do with the outcome. So now Sebastian Janikowski on to attempt about a 45-yard field goal. Yep. Boy, out, of Leckler's, out of Leckler's hole, the kick is away. It is long enough, and it is good. Sebastian Cellulitis. Janikowski, yeah, Greg, he's from Poland. He says, hey, this is a nice day. Cellulitis bothered him a couple of weeks ago. No such troubles here today, 13-3. 13 to 3 Raiders as Janikowski kicks it away. From the eight yard line, Patrick Pass. This time with a decent running start. And Pass knocked down at about the 30 yard line. I think. So onto the field again comes Tom Brady, and it's been evident since they've come back out in the second half that. Charlie Weiss and Bill Belichick and Tom Brady want to throw that ball down the field a little bit more. And Greg, they should keep throwing it now, especially your 10 points down. It's getting late in the third quarter. Keep throwing the football. Give Tom Brady and the offensive line a chance to get that rhythm to get it going. The plays look like they're there. They're just missing. The pitch for Smith. Antoine Smith can't find the room to run around the outside as Alexander and Cooper close on it. Yeah, and I was going to say, you throw it, and then you run it every once in a while to make the defense stay honest. And, you know, right there was, a, I thought, a perfect example or a perfect time to come out, play action pass, look for the deep throws over the middle. They have been open so far tonight. Tom Brady was telling us with all that time that the Patriots had on their hands at the end of the, of the season that he got a lot of mental rest. Yeah, well, first year starter in this league, I, I promise you, it's some kind of grind and it will wear you out. He needed the rest. 
quick pass out here to David Patton. Patton eludes Eric Allen and has a first down. Across the 45 to about the 47 yard line. Blitz by the Raiders. Nice job by Tom Brady. Watch how fast he gets rid of the football. One, two, just throws it. The quicker he gets rid of it, the more time it gave David Patton to make the move on Eric Allen. Eric Allen does the right thing. Do not let him go up the sideline. Force him inside where you get help from the safety, Johnny Harris. First down. Play fake. Brady over the middle. Has his man breaking free. And all the way to about the 35-yard line is Jermaine Wiggins. And with that, the third quarter will come to an end. So Brady throwing rockets, the end of the third. First down from the 35-yard line. We start the fourth quarter. Brady back in a hurry, throws incomplete. That pass intended for Patton. And boy, there is no question. There is no question he has a strong throwing arm. Yeah, I think the biggest surprise to me about Tom Brady, I saw him in Michigan when he played in college, and I had a chance. We came up here last year to do a game. I watched him throw the football, and, you know, I wasn't like, oh, wow, his arm didn't dazzle me. But this year, and especially this week, Greg, watching him on film, watching him in practice, he has a big-time arm, and when he sets up, he can drive it down the field as good as, as, good as some of the top-flight quarterbacks in the league. Second down, and he goes down. Under the blitz from the Raiders, Chris Cooper and Elijah Alexander closed on him back at his own 45-yard line. Well, I always say when you're blitzing, what's the key? It's timing. Time it right at the snap with the quarterback, and look at Elijah Alexander. That's what he does. He comes around. Greg Beekert comes in. Nobody. Damian Woody doesn't look to his right, doesn't pick it up, and they sack Tom Brady. Boy, and you know the Patriot coaching staff is looking at that as a possible drive killer. It's now third and 18. Brady with time. Lots of time. Incomplete. Wiggins, the intended receiver, and you know, I wonder if Tom Brady just Maybe thought, well, I, I can't have this much time. Yeah, well, then listen. You're conditioned to know that you don't have that much time if you're a quarterback in this league, and nobody opened down the field. The conditions make it hard for receivers to stop and change direction when they see their quarterbacks in trouble. Tim Brown back for this punt at his own 15-yard line. Walter will lock this one all the way into the end zone. So the Raiders will take over at their own 20-yard line when we come back. The Raiders from their own 20-yard line. Gannon out here to the side, Charlie Garner. Garner with a couple of moves, but can't get past Smith. Pass and he's wrapped up close to a first down. You know, as I watch the Raiders play, you're going on what now? Seven quarters in playoff football, no turnovers. Rich Gannon, of course, no interceptions. And and I got to laugh, late in the year, what did you hear, Greg? Well, they got all these veterans on their football team. Maybe they're getting tired. And it, it, when you really think about it, the veterans, they don't get tired. They know how to pace themselves. They know how important it is to win. You get tougher as a player when you're in this league because you just tolerate losing less and less. And that's what you got with this Raider team. John Gruden, he said it. My stars, they're inspired to play in these playoffs. Richard Seymour with the stop on Charlie Garner. And, you know, John Gruden has, has a saying for everything that we no, ask does, him. And, right. and we're saying, you know, well, how do you think, what do you think about you know, Bill Belichick and the defenses that he can throw at you, and you know, he'll go, well, yeah, they're good and they're formidable, but you know, as long as they don't play 12 guys on the field, we'll be okay. <laughs> we got a chance, that's right. But it is true, you know, you know, being an ex-player myself, veterans get more anxious and desperate to win football games, and Bill Belichick, he brought it up, he looked at the Raider roster, and he goes, look at these guys, they have no young players in any key positions. 
Gannon on the rollout, and he throws behind Jerry Rice. And it'll be third and ten. And you know, and the fact they got Rich Gannon, been in the league for many years, Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, Charlie Garner, he's like the young pup over there. He's been in seven years. They can do a lot of plays. They can put in a lot of thoughts for every game because veteran players just learn easier and they can learn more because the because they've been in the league more time, uh, more time. This looms as a big defensive stop as far as the field position game goes for New England. Third and ten, the Raiders at their own 30. Play clock, the two to one, and Gannon has to call a timeout. Well, that was just a good, good example of what Bill, uh, uh, John Gruden said. They disguise defenses, they try to confuse you. Rich Gannon didn't take a chance, so he calls a timeout. Uh, just remind me after the game, I'm going to make a snowball and I'll bust <laughs> you hard. Third and ten. Three out of 11 on third down conversions for the Raiders. Gannon. Has time, throws, incomplete. And Otis Smith was all over Jerry Rice, the intended receiver then. Yeah, Otis Smith had him covered very well. What a job by the Raiders again. A blitz picked up very well. Jerry Rice, another nice... Double move, Otis Smith, he says, I've seen that already tonight. All over Jerry Rice that time. So Leckler to kick. Yet again, Troy Brown on the receiving end. Line drive kick. Here's Brown. To the 35 and down on that last punt return by Troy Brown, unbeknownst to us, but not escaping the camera's eye. That football came loose. Mondrell Fulcher with the hit. Larry Izzo, his teammate, recovered. It's first down at the 33-yard line for the Patriots. Brady, with time, throws this side. His receiver slipped down, got up, and made the catch. David Patton slipped, got up, made the catch. The ball was delivered right on the money. Well, lucky for them, Torrey James, he slipped and fell too. So that allowed Patton to get back up and make the catch. But Brady looks to his left, goes to his right, and Coleman plants it right in his chest. Another good throw down the field by Tom Brady. Boy, look at that. Moves the line of scrimmage out to the 47-yard line now. Quick pass to the far side. That's caught by Kevin Falk. And Falk across midfield to about the 45-yard line of the Raiders. I like that. New England going shotgun on first down. The Raiders just using a conventional defense, not substituting. Falk still in the lineup. Brady once again from the shotgun. This time, quick pass complete to Jermaine Wiggins. And that'll pick up a couple, but might be enough for the first down. I know the New England offense hoping to take advantage of these uh, the Raider linebackers, but Beaker has had an outstanding game. We've seen Elijah Alexander have a few big plays. Not getting fooled by some of the plays and formations by New England's offense. There's a quick pass, and that's complete to Troy Brown. And Brown wrestled out of bounds by Greg Beaker. Nice pickup off the top of the snow by Troy Brown. Oh, excellent catch by Troy Brown. Good job. Again, Tom Brady. It's another blitz by the Raiders. Haven't seen him blitz this much, and nice catch. Advances the ball to the 35-yard line. It's second and two. Brady, quick pass. That's enough for a first down, and Wiggins once again with the reception. Talk about finding a rhythm. I think Mr. Brady may have done that these last few seconds. Coming up on 9.50 to play in the fourth, and Brady, five out of five, oh, throwing right. the ball for 35 yards on this drive. First down from the 32. 
this side. Oh, what a catch in front of Torrey James made by David Patton. Phil, you said about 10 minutes ago, you said maybe the Patriots would look at this film and regret not throwing the ball more. Yeah, I think they were a little conservative early, Craig. There are open or chances to throw the ball down the field because of the defense the Raiders play, and Patton just goes up and watching. Ball gets away from Brady and just pulls it out of the air. That's one of the few that's gotten away from Brady tonight. And Patton made the saving grab. Line of scrimmage, the 20-yard line. To the near side. And is that caught? It is caught. Jermaine Wiggins caught it off of David Patton. Brady gets rid of it quickly. Patton drops it. Wiggins, good job. Gets possession before he goes out of bounds. Both feet down. And the line of scrimmage now the 16-yard line after a four-yard pickup, and it's second and six. I think it's second and five. Patriots now all but abandoning the run and the pass to the near side is complete to Patton. Well, there's Chuck Bresnahan on the sideline. Because they're going no huddle, he holds up a colored card and the whole defense just looks over and they know what it is by looking at that card. They don't have to get, get up in a huddle and call out what they're going to do. That way they won't get caught off guard by the hurry up offense by the Patriots who huddled that play. On first down, the pass over the middle, and that's complete to Wiggins, and Wiggins has become a one-man wrecking crew in the Oakland secondary. Move the line of scrimmage to the seven-yard line. Second and goal, and Brady nine out of nine for 60 yards on this drive. Steps up, gonna run it inside the five, touchdown! What you got, you got the Oakland Raider defense sitting back trying to protect because the hurry up offense has got them on their heels. Look, everybody's in the end zone. Brady makes one little move. Beaker misses him and he gets the touchdown. And Tom Brady, he did a header trying to spike the football. Flat on his face into the snow. Vinatieri on for the extra point. Perfect. Tom Brady can celebrate a touchdown, can he? <laughs> even, his, even his teammate says, when you score, look out. But he's coming. Terry Kirby from the 10. Dips to the outside and runs out of bounds. Well, Tom Brady in a celebratory move in the end zone and yeah look out <laughs> well we were talking to troy brown on thursday and he says you know tom brady brings so much emotion to the football team and he says boy if you catch a touchdown pass you got to protect yourself because he's coming down in that end zone and he is going to get after it and you know why not you're a young quarterback it's such an emotional game and when you score a touchdown in this league it's time to celebrate Let's see how the Raiders bounce back. First down from their own 30-yard line. Charlie Garner trying to bounce to the outside. Gets running room and is close to a first down. Teddy Bruschi ran him out of bounds, and let's see if he got enough for the first down. That's a big run to get the Raiders back on the offensive map. Well, anytime you go against the defense, coached by Bill Belichick and Romeo Cornell, they pride themselves, and we're not going to let you run the football. You're going to beat us, you're going to beat us throwing it, but Charlie Garner hangs in there, waited for the hole to open up, and it did. 
picked up some big yards. Second and one. Give it to the first man Can't through, and that's Zach Crockett. And Crockett has the first down. You know, for a minute there, I thought it was John Ritchie. Oh. That would have been his first carry of the year. That's cool. What a time to give it to him. John Ritchie has caught 19 passes on the season, has not carried the ball once. And you know, he doesn't care. Nope. He says, look, I know my role. I'm in the huddle with Hall of Famers. Give it to them. Don't give it to me. John Ritchie would go home disappointed if he didn't get to hit anybody. Well, you don't have to worry about that. First down from the 41. Coming this way and turning the corner is Garner. That is the difference this year. This Raiders offense throwing it more, not relying on the run. But when they do run it, Charlie Garner gives them the option of going inside. He runs hard even though he's not a big running back but he can take it outside anytime. Has the speed to outrun defenders, and that's what he did that time. There's his day. Boy, did he deliver the backbreaker last week to New York Jets. He had a 15 carry, 158 yard, and one touchdown day as he comes off to the sideline. Well, you know, he had a long run. He's got to get off the field. He needs a rest. Second and four. This is Kirby, and Kirby dives. And didn't get enough. There's a loose ball, but it's been blown dead. Kirby diving for the first down, and from the initial indication, he would appear to be short. That was some hit. I could not tell from here who made the hit. I think it's Teddy Bruschi, middle linebacker. What did he say, Greg? When you're playing middle linebacker, oh, oh man, what a hit. Good job by Terry Kirby. Hold on to football, hits the ground, then picks up about another half yard or so. But Teddy Bruschi says, when you're a middle linebacker, you've got to stand over there, and all you do is you look and you say, well, I see the little hole over here. That's where the running back's going to go, and then you hit it. That's all. Yeah, it sounds simple, doesn't it? Yeah. Of course, you've got to tackle a 240-pound guy that can run real fast. But Ted Bruschi, I told you earlier, the coaches for the Patriots said that when you talk about instincts, and just to explain that, he just has a way of always being around the football and making plays. That's what instincts are. And that's why he's in there, because don't forget, the Patriots had what they thought was one of the best middle linebackers in the business, and Ted Johnson, he can't get back in the game because he got hurt, and Teddy Bruschi's played so well. Well, the Raiders are looking at a third and one. Patriot fans calling on their defense to put the clamps on the Raiders here at midfield. Well, you could you could get anything here. You could get a running play up the middle, a running play to the outside, Rich Gannon running, or a pass. 5-15 to play in the fourth. The first down and more for Garner. Now, you know, we said earlier, what did Bill Belichick say? Rich Gannon, he's got all the tricks. He's got them all, and that's what he did that time. They came up and lined up so fast, and it was a real quick snap count, and the Patriots, a little slow getting off the football, not able to stop the running play. 450 and counting on the clock. Now, you know, really, Greg, that, that is just a wonderful job by Rich Gannon. Being smart, trying to give his team a little bit of help in a tough situation. On first down, they'll keep it on the ground with Garner again, and Garner wrapped up by Roman Pfeiffer, number 95. Loss of one, and it'll be second and 11, and the clock continues to move with 4.20 to play. Well, if nothing else, even if you don't score in this drive, what you've done, you're most likely gonna make the Patriots have to go a long way just to, to get a field goal chance or to score a touchdown or whatever they're gonna need. Winner tonight gets a spot in the AFC title game against the winner of tomorrow's Baltimore-Pittsburgh game. And to throw out here, incomplete, intended for Ritchie. Third and 11. The blitz was coming. Pressure the quarterback. If you got to make a play, don't sit back and... That is one of the few times you can tell Rich Gannon does not have control of this football. 
get a little bit wet. Being careful with the throw, and it's offline. Third and a long 11. Blitz. Gannett throws it away. New England will regain control with about 335 and all three of their timeouts remaining. Leckler will kick to Troy Brown. And this one will roll to a stop at about the 20 yard line. Thank you guys and gals. 3.35 to play. First down from the 20 yard line. Brady so successful throwing the football on the last drive and what a catch by Wiggins. Blown dead. Wiggins didn't think he was touched. But it's enough for a first down. Well when you watch a situation like this you know what the Patriots are going to do. They're going to be aggressive and keep going on offense. But I always find it interesting. What are you? Whoa. I just got hit by a snowball. And I see the guy that threw it. Excuse me. Sorry, Greg. I think they were throwing at you. They just missed you. <laughs> yeah. Brady throwing deep down the sideline for Patton. Incomplete. And what a play by Torrey James. They've been throwing the football underneath the Patriots have an offense, so they try to go deep. Tom Brady underthrows it. Well, Brady had completed 10 straight passes before that incompletion, and now it's second and 10. What a second half Tom Brady has had throwing the football. Quick pass, incomplete, off the hands of David Patton. Well, the throw's offline, and it's offline because Tom Brady is under pressure. And we always say this, too. Interceptions come from being pressured where you don't have time to sit up. That makes it go offline. Or being under pressure, it's hard to make always make good decisions. Now, Brady with a big third and ten. Patriots still with three timeouts remaining. Here comes the blitz. Quick pass, incomplete at the feet of Fred Coleman, number 84. Not much the Patriots can do. Good job on defense by the Raiders. They show the blitz, they wait late. The Patriots cannot react to it. And no hesitation by Bill Belichick. He sends the punter onto the field. Ken Walter will kick it away to Tim Brown. No rush. Line drive kick. Fair catch called for and made by Brown with 2.41 to play here in regulation. To the line of scrimmage the 35 yard line and the Raiders will try to take a chunk of time off the clock Garner stacked up reverses direction and gets a bunch of yardage comes up about two yards shy of a first down well this is just all effort by Charlie Garner New England in the backfield has him for about a five yard loss Teddy Bruschi's got him. Roman Pfeiffer changes directions. Leaps a couple of guys on the ground. Wow, what a run. Seven yard pickup and the clock stops with 2.31 to play as Bill Belichick burns the first of his three timeouts. Charlie Garner might be the best free agent pickup of the offseason. He has been so valuable to the Raiders all season long. 
look what he's done so far today. 95 total yards and he just makes it hard for defenses because he does so much, Greg. Runs the football. You know he's going to do that. He catches it out of the backfield. He lines up as a wide receiver. We've seen him all year long do a terrific job on the outside, too. During the regular season, 800 yards rushing, another 578 in receptions. That's an all-purpose back. Yeah, you're doing that. You're on the same team with Tyrone Wheatley, Jerry Rice, Tim Brown. And Rich Gannon. Yeah, of course, Rich Gannon, who delivers the ball to all of them. Second and three. Once again, Garner and Richie behind Gannon. And once again, Charlie Garner. Garner, looking for a first down, appears to have come up short of it. And once again, the Patriots call timeout and stop the clock with 2.24 to play. They have one timeout remaining. Well, the one thing, what did I ask you when we were in the meeting with John Gruden yesterday? I said, when you got near the end of the game, did you ever think about maybe passing it and just icing it? And John Gruden says, no. I was going to run that football, and we were going to make the other team go down the field to, to score to tie us or try to win the game or whatever. So in these situations, he generally plays it fairly conservative and runs it up in there and leads it up to his players to make the the plays on the field to decide whether you're going to win or lose. Well, nothing is absolute, but you'd have to say that John Gruden would feel pretty good about his chances with a first down here and the Patriots able to stop the clock only twice more, once with a timeout and once at the two-minute warning. You know, that first run by first down run by Charlie Garner, that changed everything. Oakland Raiders looking for a victory that would either send them home to meet Baltimore or send them to Pittsburgh to meet the Steelers in the AFC Championship game a week from tomorrow. Third and one. Richie and Zach Crockett. It's Crockett straight ahead. And he is close. Ah, uh, he's short. It looks like they're definitely marking it short of the orange line or the yellow and we are going to get a measurement two nineteen on the clock well there was no doubt the Oakland Raiders were going to run the football that time in that situation and if they're short there is no doubt in my mind they're going to punt the football. I spoke too soon. It's short. And let's keep in mind, Gerard Cherry came very close to blocking the last kick. Oh, uh, he had it blocked, Greg. What happened is, just like a blitz, he waited a little too long to make his move to get up in there and block the kick by Leckler. And Leckler saw him coming, so he kicked to his left to, to avoid it. One man back, and that's Troy Brown. And now the Patriots use their third and final timeout. Use their timeout at the 219 mark. That means that they can only stop the clock once more. And that's at the two minute warning. Good job. You call the timeout there, you save yourself. 19 seconds and that's what you generally Greg would say when you call a timeout on the field so Bill Belichick wanting to give his team as much time as possible you know we saw Brian Cox in an active conversation with Bill Belichick <laughs> we were talking about Brian Cox yesterday for someone who doesn't get much playing time he may be the most quoted New England Patriot of all you're not afraid to speak to speak to the press I saw him at practice on Thursday I said Brian you're going to get a few plays in this game and well, I'll, I'll just go right. He just basically said, no, he's not going to get to play much. But he goes, I'll tell you what, though, Phil, I'm going to be the best dang cheerleader you've ever seen on the sideline for his team. So not getting on the field a lot, but still tries to keep the emotions and the feelings of his players up. The Patriots want to go after Leckler, but they don't want to hit him. They don't go after it. Leckler gets it away. Brown will feel it on one hop. 
straight up the middle. Lots of running room, spinning, and goes down. Loose football. It looks like the Patriots may have fallen on it. Larry Izzo again. Number 53, Larry Izzo. That returned across the 45 to about the 46 or 47 yard line. Well, we haven't talked about special teams a whole lot this game, but the New England Patriots felt like they had a distinct advantage on special teams, especially in this area. Punt return, mainly because Leckler kicks the ball so well sometimes, he outkicks his coverage. That time, Troy Brown. Good job, caught the football on the bounce and right up the middle of the field for good yardage. And there's Brad Seeley, the special teams coach. Two minutes, six seconds to play in the fourth quarter. The Raiders lead the Patriots 13 to 10. New England out of timeouts. Need a field goal to tie. Brady from the shotgun throws Kevin Falk. Falk on the move across midfield and into Oakland territory. Patriots are out of timeouts. This is a second and three from the Oakland 47. Brady with time, running out of time now, on the move, and is gonna run for the first down and has it and goes out of bounds. Brady Jackson ran him out of bounds, but not before Brady picked up the first down. Well, that alone is enough to make you run a little faster <laughs> than you're capable of if Grady Jackson about 350 pounds is, is chasing after you. Tom Brady, good job. Didn't force it down the field. Remember, you're in a situation where you have four downs. And boy, big Brady Jackson. What an athlete to be that size and to be able to run that to run that fast. First down from the 42. Blitz. Lost the football. It's on the ground. Covered by the Raiders. His college teammate, Charles Woodson, on the blitz. Tom Brady never sees him coming from the front side. Greg Beekert recovers the fumble. Let's go back and take a look, and here comes Charles Woodson. Top of your screen, Charles Woodson untouched. And Beekert picks himself up, falls on the football, and has pretty much sealed an Oakland Raider victory here in New England. Boy, Tom Brady even said, my locker mate in college right near me, Charles Woodson. Well, they are going to, under two minutes, review whether or not Brady's arm was in motion or whether whether it's an incomplete pass or a fumble. That'll be an automatic review from upstairs. Yes, that's right. I don't think there's much, much doubt, Greg, but the Oakland Raiders, knowing the situation, we're not going to sit back. They came. Charles Woodson, first time today I've seen him come on a blitz. Oh. The question is, did he pull it down? His arm was going forward, but was he throwing a football? Well, they, the exact term I can't think of, but if you throw a pass, and as you're faking that pass, now watch, as you're faking the pass, if it slipped out of your hand, that would be an incomplete pass. But was it forced out by Charles Woodson? I don't think the, the recoil of the fake throw is what made it come out of Tom Brady's hand. In other words, if a quarterback drops back and he goes to throw it at the last second, he sees the receiver is covered. And changes his mind. And changes his mind. If the ball slips out of his hand, that is an incomplete pass. But he had control of it. Charles Woodson hits him. And that, the hit causes the fumble. That ball did not look like it was slipping out of his hands. It was forced out by Woodson. Well, a little drama with a minute 43 to play. Well, let's find out if my interpretation is right. I think it is, though, Greg, because we, we went over this rule quite extensively before the season started. And Charles Woodson just, what a call by Chuck Bresnahan. You're taking your best cover guy and you bring him on a blitz. And there's no doubt that football was not slipping out of Tom Brady's hands after the 
He was going to throw it to his back out of the backfield, saw he was recovered. After reviewing the play, the quarterback's arm was going forward. It is an incomplete thing. <laughs> Second and 10 on the 42. Wow. It, of course, is up to Walt Coleman's interpretation. Well, there's no doubt his arm was going forward. Sure. But he had held up, I believe, on his pass attempt. Well, I see. You know, I understand. That's why you got to wait for the interpretation or the officials. New life for the Patriots. Now he went forward with the throw, but it looks like he stopped the throw in motion and had control of the football. John Gruden disagrees. Adam Vinatieri with a season long of 54, but it did not come in the snowstorm. A career long of 55. Boy, what a what a. What a decision. Well, Walt Coleman, you know, of course, I think he knows the rules better than us, and it's it's the proper call. Yes, the arm was going forward. And now they're explaining it to John Gruden. Keep in mind, the wind will eventually be the Adam Vinatieri's back. Well, no doubt his arm is going forward. Now Tom Brady had changed his mind and was not going to throw the football. That's what I was judging my decision on here but he's pulling it down. They're saying he's he's tucking the football but he has control of it. And now Walt Coleman. Well I think they're just checking to make sure where the football is what. Our man Ethan Cooperson here in the booth says it should be the Oakland 42 yard line. Now the proper term they use the tuck and then as you see Tom Brady tucked the football he has control of it. Well the snow is blowing even more from left to right which is the direction the Patriots are going. We have a minute 43 on the clock. The Patriots are out of timeouts. Here comes Walt Coleman. Now we were just told Greg when the quarterback pulls the football down or tucks it it doesn't matter if he's intending to throw the football or not. It is an incomplete pass. So that clarifies that. Now we're looking for a place to spot the football. I'm going to come over to this side of the field. And now the explanation for John Gruden. This is a huge call. The difference is possession and the chance for a possible game tying field goal and staying alive in the postseason oh. for the New England Patriots. It's huge but the rule the rule Please reset at the clock to 147 147. Well the Patriots get possession and four more seconds. <laughs> I think it's safe to say well it depends on the outcome here but this will be talked about quite a bit. You think. Yeah, maybe. I'm good at those kind of things. <laughs> Second down and 10 for Brady and the Patriots. Pass to this side, and that's complete to Patton. Patton. First down, New England. Well, they have found the spot that they really want to work. To the outside, David Patton against Torrey James. Torrey James being smart, not overcommitting because you do not want David Patton to run by you. The, from, 
I'm sorry, the Patriots are in field goal range. From the 28. Over the middle. Knocked down by Woodson. Incomplete. That'll stop the clock at 115. Uh, Terry. I know this, Greg. If I'm the quarterback, I look over there on defense and I look where 24 is. I do not even think of throwing to his receiver. Charles Woodson has a painful toe injury, never practices with the Oakland Raiders during the week, comes out every every weekend and plays, plays spectacular. Second and ten. Pump fake. Ball wobbles as it was hit. Tony Bryant applied the hit to Brady, and the ball falls incomplete, and it's third and ten. Tony Bryant, number 94, from the outside. Nice job. Greg Beekert actually picks the offensive lineman to let Tony Bryant come in and get the hit on the quarterback. David Patton, seven catches, 101 yards tonight. Third and ten. Brady on the run, straight up the middle, kept it in the middle of the field. And here comes Vinatieri. The clock continues to move. No snowplow in sight tonight. Well, as you watch the TV, you can see the snow is moving in the same direction that he is kicking. So that means he does have a little help with the wind to uh, get this kick up. This will be a 45-yard attempt. That's Vinatieri's luck from this distance of late. This is the Patriots' season on the line. The kick is away. It is. Season, no big deal. What a pressure kick by Adam Vinatieri. And I lost sight of it in the snow, and it just gets over the crossbar. Let's watch his body language. He knows it's close. Patriots behind Tom Brady have scored 10 points in the last eight minutes. The Patriots see their season stay alive with 27 seconds to go in regulation. The Raiders and Patriots are tied at 13. Imagine the emotion felt by Patriot owner Bob Kraft. A fan since 1960, a season ticket owner since 71, and the owner of the team since 1994. They're about to move in to a new stadium next season. This stadium, however, just won't die. Bob Kraft is behind the snow there somewhere. Here's the kick. Terry Kirby. is brought down at about the 35 yard line and the Raiders with two timeouts have the ball at their own 35. Well with the two timeouts Greg I think you test the water a little bit here. Maybe you run a draw play or a screen something real safe and see if you pick up some big yards and if you do you call a timeout and you take a chance to one more good play to give your field goal kicker Sebastian Janikowski who could even in this snow and going in the wind and still kick it a long way. New England fans will tell you that referee Ben Dreif cost them a playoff game in 1976 against the Oakland Raiders out there. And Gannon will take a knee let the time expire and we are headed to overtime in Foxborough. What a night 
in Foxborough, Massachusetts. At the end of regulation, Belichick's Patriots, Gruden's Raiders are tied at 13. A lot of big plays in that last drive. Of course, the what we thought was a Tom Brady fumble, ruled incomplete pass, and then a very good decision by Tom Brady before the field goal kick. Nobody opened down the field. He doesn't take a chance. He pulls it down, picks up a couple yards, and they make the 43-yard field goal. That's a great decision by a second-year quarterback. The coin toss. Each team will have three timeouts. The first team who scores wins. All right, Oakland, you're the victor. The Patriots win the toss. The Raiders take the win. You know, Greg, when they had the coin toss, I was wondering if if you win it, you kick off and take the win behind you. But the Patriots win the toss. They immediately took it, and the Oakland Raiders, of course, knew, well, let's kick down win. Janikowski will kick it away. Patrick Pass, J.R. Redmond are deep. From about the 11, it's pass. Right side has room to run. Oh, and what a fine tackle made by Terry Kirby, number 42. Well, as I look at this Patriots offense, do you go back to the offense that drove you down and gave you a touchdown, the one that gave you a chance to kick that field goal, and it looks like they are. Brady from the shotgun. Line of scrimmage. The New England 34. Brady over the middle, and that's complete, and immediately corralling the receiver is William Thomas. That pass to J.R. Redmond. Well, we're also told by Armacatan on the field, even though you see the snow blowing a little bit sideways, he says wind is really not a factor on the field, so it should not affect Tom Brady throwing into it. On second and nine. Screen pass for Redmond. Redmond. Bounces off tacklers, has a first down, and more. Close to the Oakland 40 yard line. 21 yard pickup and a first down. The screen plays have worked well tonight for the New England Patriots. They got the Raiders full. Good reaction, though. The Raiders come up. It looks like they're going to make the tackle, but Redmond breaks it and picks up a long game. These fans have been under constant snowfall since four this afternoon. They have gotten their money's worth. First down from the 45. Brady looks far side, and that's complete to the tight end, Jermaine Wiggins. You know, we've noticed, Phil, that we, we've talked about their, their, they were teammates at Michigan, but Tom Brady hasn't really thrown at Charles Woodson tonight, has he? Well, he did a couple times, and the couple times he did, Charles Woodson was all over the receiver, Greg, and I think everybody knows that when you play the Oakland Raiders, the one guy you do not want to take a chance against is Charles Woodson. There they go, thrown at one time. Pump fake and another screen to Redmond and Redmond bouncing off a tackler again. Reagan Upshaw makes the stop. Boy, Johnny Harris that time number 37 did a terrific job of coming up and ruining the screen because it was set up. They faked it to the left. We're going to go to the right. 
Harris destroyed it by coming up and getting rid of the blockers. Hey, the scoreboard says the line of scrimmage is the 45, but I think it's more like the 40-yard line, Phil. Third and five. Quick pass. Wiggins, first down. Watch what Tom Brady does on this play. Third and five. He looks to his right real quick, just enough to make the defense move, and it opened up the middle. It let Wiggins just get that extra two or three yards after the catch. John Gruden told us his toughest loss all season was a trip to Miami where he was beaten on the last play of the game. If he loses this one, I think this would be even tougher. First down from the 34. Brady over the middle, bobbled, and held on to by Wiggins. That one had trouble written all over it. Wiggins surrounded by Oakland defenders. Well, New England's down to about one more first down. They know they're in field goal range. Of course, the coaches for the Raiders know that, so. Boy, after a relatively quiet first half, Tom Brady has lit it up throwing the football in the second half. We are in overtime. Second and six. The handoff. And Redmond doesn't get much. It'll be third and six. Well, Johnny Harris again, Johnny number 37. Harris. Stops what I, you think might be good yardage by the New England offense. He stops another play. Brought in as a starter late in the season. Johnny Harris has done a good job. An excellent tackler, and he has shown that here in overtime in, in, in the whole game. Brady, quick pass. That one's complete to Troy Brown. <laughs> and we'll see where the ball is placed. There's a timeout called for declining what would be a 46 yard field goal attempt Bill Belichick has sent his offense back onto the field for fourth and four yeah uh, the field goal attempt I don't think there's any question Greg that's not even in the decision making and my first thought was well go ahead and punt it but you're and, and really give Oakland back them up and see if you could stop them and get good field position again but you're on the 20 I got to count it eight 28 yard <laughs> Well, Vinatieri made a 45-yard field goal to tie the game with the win and barely made it through the uprights. Well, what you have to do, the Patriots got to have a play that gives Tom Brady time enough to throw the football in case the Oakland Raiders blitz. A lot of times they're putting so many receivers out, the Raiders blitz, he's throwing a lot of short passes, and they're doing a terrific job of making the tackles right away once the receivers catch it. So keep somebody in. Help the pass protection, then you can throw it down the field. Fourth and four. Brady pumps, pumps again, throws, and that's complete for a first down. David Patton, who has had an incredible second half here tonight. David Patton has made so many catches where he's been on the ground a couple times. He's fallen and gotten back up, made the catch again on the ground. And I'm not sure Tom Brady was throwing to him or the tight end going outside. First down, New England at the Oakland 22. Antoine Smith in the backfield takes the handoff to the 20, to the 18-yard line. The Patriots come into this game on a six game winning streak. They've won eight of their last nine. Boy, Antoine Smith has basically been out of the game the whole second half. The Patriots go into the passing game. They brought in J.R. Redmond. Now, 
You bring Antoine Smith in, you think they got to run the football with him. Second and six. Smith changes direction and may have picked up a yard. Marquez Pope and Elijah Alexander on the stop. Well, let's see. I'm going to guess here right now. Keep Antoine Smith in the backfield, fake it to him, and try to throw it to get really close in case you want to go for a field goal attempt. I don't think you can pick up a first down if you run Antoine Smith up the middle. The receivers of choice in the second half have been the tight end Jermaine Wiggins and wide receiver David Patton. Third and five from the 17. They give it to Smith. Drives the right side. He's going to get a first down inside the 10 yard line. What the Patriots do, they bring in two tight ends and they go outside where the two tight ends are blocking a terrific job. Rod Rutledge, number 83, look at that block. Mark Edwards, good job getting to the inside, and Johnny Harris misses the tackle on Antoine Smith. Eight-yard pickup, first and goal from the eight. Make it the nine. Smith stood up at about the eight-yard line. John Gruden pushing his defense for a turnover. Brady goes all the way over to Bill Belichick for that call. Well, when you see the head coach do that, that means <laughs> let's make sure we keep it in the middle of the field. Do not risk fumbling the football. Let's see if Brady just falls on it. 14th play of this drive. And Brady off the left side. And onto the field comes Adam Vinatieri. Adam Vinatieri and his holder, Ken Walter, clearing some space for what appears to be about a 23 yard game winning field goal attempt. What a game this has been. Well, you see John Gruden yelling at his players. He wants to take a timeout. Which they apparently haven't called yet, but they will. You know, I've talked to kickers, situations like this. I say, when you get ice, does it bother you when they do that? And they go, no, they love it. It just gives them more time to prepare and get ready for the kick. This is to advance to the AFC Championship game. win it 16 13 in overtime Vinatieri a 45 yard field goal to tie it and then caps a 61 yard drive in overtime this stadium was supposed to be demolished on the 23rd of December the day after their last regular season home game but the Patriots kept winning and have come back here and may come back here yet again, depending on what happens tomorrow. Well, Greg, during the timeout, we saw all the Patriot players out there trying to clear space for Adam Vinatieri to have good footing to kick this game-winning field goal. Tom Brady. Now 12 and 3 as a starter. And what a change in philosophy in the second half. That was the difference for the Patriots 
They opened it up. They started throwing the football, and Tom Brady came through for the New England Patriots. Tom Brady threw for 238 yards after halftime, a total of 312, and for John Gruden, an excruciating end to his season. Well, you see the despair all year long. You fight so long, you think you got the game won. A replay brings it back, and then you lose in overtime.